talented volunteers deliver aid supplies to impoverished families and non-province. Shaman City volunteers provide free haircuts to seniors at Gulanyu Island regularly. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. Thailand City volunteers from Bangkok visit Nam province in the north to host several winter aid distributions for the impoverished. In total, about 1,000 households are being helped this year, and the aid supplies given will surely keep them warm throughout the winter. Fog in the mountains and temperature falling, winter is here. This is Suji's second year to send love. This is a huge emotional support for our villagers, no matter if there are a lot of aid items or not. The villagers are much moved. Most of the villagers are farmers. Through actual survey, volunteers discovered there are still many families in need of clothes to keep warm in the winter. Thus, 1,041 families are on the list. It's very cold in winter. I can't start a fire to keep warm because it pollutes the environment. From preparations to transportation to even decorating the venue, local volunteers have mobilized to do their part. We can feel that someone is caring for our village, and it makes our town more warmer for it. The three aid distributions in three days were all conducted in the midst of the morning fog. And although temperatures have been low, Tsuji volunteers do their best to provide warmth like the sun. When Tsuji knows their sufferings, we visit to help. Sharing the origins of Tsuji's eco-friendly blanket and promoting the bamboo coin bank, Volunteers lead everyone in a song of We Are One Family, as well as a prayer of hope and blessings. I helped in all three aid distributions, and I don't feel tired from it. When I know Tsuji will bring here, I am filled with joy in my heart because I have the opportunity to give back to society. My heart is filled with Tsuji. Seeing each household take home the aid materials for the winter ahead, Tsuji volunteers hope they can stay warm and have a peaceful season. I'm so happy. I've never received so many items. I'm so grateful for this. Thank you. Tsuji's roots have long been planted in Paraguay with many local volunteers influenced to join the ranks. Among them is Marta de Mesa. Although she had a spinal cooperation and cannot walk as well as before, she does not let her pain affect her ability to volunteer. Asuncion, the mother of cities, is one of the oldest cities in South America. It is home to over 30% of Paraguay's population. Many have come to the capital to seek jobs due to the rapid decline in the local economy in recent years. The poor had a hard time living in the past. Living here in the city, life is better. There's an old saying, it's like living in the land of butter. The poor here live on public land, which they don't have to pay rent for, nor worry about electricity or water bill. The land is near the city, which is easy for them to find a job. It is also near the Parana River, so it's convenient for them to fish for food to eat. Everything sounds wonderful except for one thing. The Parana River broke the dam and when the flood came, these living near the river were forced to evacuate their homes. Every one of them became homeless and had to live in tents on the street. With Marta's assistance, many of the flood victims received help in the form of food, free clinic, as well as much emotional support. Most of the time, we'd only provide them with treatment for their sickness, but we also need to treat their emotional needs. Suji's service isn't just to those affected by the flooding, but it includes those living on the fringes of society. Without Suji's home visits and free clinics, many of them wouldn't have been able to see a doctor, nor receive treatment for their ailments. They would also go hungry without food to eat. Muchas veces, no solo le cura las enfermedades. I'm so happy to see you. Your visit to my daughter-in-law and I are very much appreciated.
though she's had surgery on her spine and it hindered her walking, Marta still remains firm on the city path and continues to visit each household as needed. She's become the best communication bridge between the Chinese city volunteers and local recipients. Marta is a very loving Marta is a volunteer who is filled with love. She is a hard worker that doesn't complain about volunteer work, nor refuses tasks asked of her. She gets along well with other city sisters. I often tell my mother to rest, but she always says there are those whose physical health is worse than me and they need assistance. She will then take a pain medication and head out the door. This is why I like Tsuji, they let people know what true love is. It is the same for everyone, no matter your race, religious belief, or the color of your skin. Tsuji has long established an office in Brazil despite the language and cultural differences. However, this love is looking to blossom. The Chinese Tsuji volunteers need the help of local volunteers. But how to recruit more like minded individuals if their differences are so vastly wide? Let's take a look at how they overcame the obstacle. Today, 40 to 50 people came, and if 10% of them, like five of them, are locals, then it's a very good turnout. Recruiting native Brazilian people to Tsuji has always been an obstacle. Among the hurdles are that their culture and perspectives are very different. Tsuji's philosophy is hard to understand. What I mean is the ideas is easy to speak about, but it's difficult to find an NGO which will really follow through with their promises. To facilitate more local residents in joining the charitable organization, the volunteers simply talk about values in Tsuji which everyone can easily understand. It's a privilege to know someone who gives selflessly. They really don't ask for anything in return. The need to increase local volunteers is that Tsuji has many activities in the country which needs more people to help out, including medical free clinics, disaster relief, and helping disadvantaged groups. One such disadvantaged group is those who live at the Casa de David. The money we receive from the Minister of Health and Welfare is barely enough to cover the wages of our staff. This is why we need more funding to help change the residents' living conditions. Tsuji's efforts throughout the years have slowly been recognized by local authorities, with the city of Osasco presenting an appreciation award to the foundation to thank them for their selfless deeds. When you see the tsunami, which is quite unfortunate, when you see strong winds attacking, there will be volunteers there, and also Tsuji volunteers. We work well with the city, and whenever they have a disaster or other major problems, they'll ask Tsuji to help. We also try very hard to make sure we complete each task that we do. I pray to God that more people will want to do volunteer work, as with the increase in charitable deeds, can our world be filled with a more humanitarian society and love. As language and cultural differences make it a bit harder to promote Tsuji's mission in the country, the Tsuji volunteers nevertheless continue to walk this difficult journey. As they know, with time and effort, they can cross that barrier of race, skin color, and language. Tsuji's influence on our kids is great. They have learned life's value. They have made them successful people in the future. Two years ago, Dr. Ling Mongjie of the team at USM Manisha Richardson at a homeless shelter. Dr. Ling gave medical services to her family members as they are financially distressed. Nesha Rustin gave birth to her child, so the volunteers visited her to show care. She is Li Mongjie, an eye doctor. In a recent free clinic in Los Angeles, she discovered Nesha's family was not well off. They had provisions but had no money to buy eyeglasses. 
So Dr. Lin studied a caring process. I've examined their eyes several times, and her children's eyeglasses are broken several times, and we have helped her. Her eldest son is in college, so we also give him scholarship to encourage him to continue. After taking off her doctor's robe, Li Mongjie walks into Naisha's home as a volunteer to congratulate her for her third child. Dr. Lin also brought with her fruits and second-hand baby's carriage. You have been more than a volunteer, more than just a doctor. You've been more like a friend, and I feel like we're kind of like your extended family now. She trusts Ji very much, as she's willing to tell us everything. Every time we visit her, it's like a family reunion. She will tell us everything about her eldest child, her second child, etc. For the past two years, Dr. Lin and Ji Ji volunteers have been accompanying Daisha and her family and helping them. Naisha recently got a job as a school bus driver and has moved into a government-subsidized apartment, so her life has become better. She is now ready to start a new chapter of her life. Shaman City volunteers started to care for the seniors at the tourist attraction of Gulandri Island since one year ago. They began to pay regular visits to the homes of those physical challenged seniors, helping them to cut their hairs. The love will continue to last. Grandma Zhu heard the familiar voice came in the front door of her house. Although she was a bedridden patient due to stroke, she felt happy seeing her old friends. Volunteers helped her get out of her bed and asked the barber to cut the hair for her. You'll feel better after the haircut. Since you lay in bed for a long time, your hair gets longer and you might feel uncomfortable. After the haircut, Grandma Zhu felt fresher. Later on, volunteers also helped wash her hair, providing her the best service with love and care. I feel grateful to help others, and I feel like cutting seniors' hair can really help them. It is my honor to do this. These are the free haircut service Xiamen Tzuji volunteers serve at the tourist attraction of Gulang Yu Island, and it has now reached their one-year anniversary. No matter in what season, volunteers will come to seniors' home, providing free haircut service for them when they need it. Thank you for coming here today. The weather is really hot, but you still bring children to visit me. Thank you for your efforts. I am very grateful. Here are mostly seniors and some brothers, sisters who have some physical illness. So whenever we help them cut their hair, they will feel better and fresh. The seniors of Gulangyu Island felt the warmth and care after Tsuji volunteers visit. They forgot about their loneliness as if seeing sunshine came into their heart. Tima members in the Northern District visited Sanjin and Shima regularly to provide free medical services to the elderly living in remote mountainous area. A pharmacist Zhang Shuci joined Tima Medical Outreach for the first time. Tima members passed through a cluster of silver grass and went down the stairs to visit Xu Yuan, who is 90 years old and staying near a slope of a valley. Grandpa, there's hot water here inside, warm water. Today is a bit cold. You can drink this bottle of water. Jiang Yuqi coaxed Grandpa to wear a pair of warm socks. <laughs> After finishing her study and returning from Australia, Jiang Yuqi joined Tima Medical Outreach for the first time and is determined to be a considerate pharmacist. A Chinese medicine physician, Chu Wei Yuan, is one of Tima Outreach team members in Sanzi and Ximen. He will patiently listen to the elderly and also recommend that ITV to them when taking their pulse. Ma, 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 ma,
living in remote mountain areas, although it is not as convenient as in the city. The elderly, who is having pure hearts and pure mind, will also make the daughters happy. <laughs> Measuring blood pressure and blood sugar, providing consultation, checking physical status, and even cutting hair are all needed to be done during team medical outreach. In fact, the main purpose is to meet the elderly. Team members send them spring festival couplets before Lunar New Year and also agree to come again next year. Dalin Zizhi Hospital, in cooperation with the Ministry of Health and Wealth Care's home care system, provides traditional Chinese medicine care to improve the patient's living quality. The car goes along country roads and arrives at the home of Grandma Zhu. She is over 80 years old and suffers from mobility issues and dementia. Dr. Zheng Zhu Yan examines her pulses, gives her acupuncture, describes medicine, and also teaches the grandma's maid how to carry out acupuncture massage. Grandma used to feel uncomfortable. You see, I massage her here with slight effort, and I massage her like this slowly. She can talk and she's okay. Her blood pressure is normal, her feces is normal, and her diet is normal. We came to provide acupuncture, powdered Chinese medicine, acupuncture spot massage, and health education, hoping to slow down grandma's dementia. After we have been coming here for two to three months, we've noticed that grandma has more spirit and she can respond to questions better. To provide medical care to people who can't leave home because of the mobility issue or their illnesses, the home care comprehensive system brings medical teams to patients' homes to treat them. The doctor is really nice and has patience. He used to sit in a wheelchair all day long, but after the acupuncture, he's able to stand up. The doctor said that patients requiring home medical care, serious home medical care, or home palliative care will be evaluated by Western medicine doctors and traditional Chinese medicine doctors. Then a medical team will come to the patient's homes to provide medical assistance to improve the patient's living quality and to reduce the burden of caretakers. The elementary division of Tsiji Senior High affiliated with Tsiji University had a day of activities exploring what life is like for those with physical handicaps. At the end of the day, the students learned to count their blessings and understood that a little empathy can go a long way. When one can't see clearly what are the problems one may encounter, the students soon realize with this color mask over their eyes, their vision is compromised. But if the vision is completely gone, the children then take careful steps and even cling on to their partner tightly, never letting go of their hands. Sometimes the kids do not know the hurdles those physical challenges go through in life or even in their studies. We hope this type of lessons, which are a bit more fun, can give them an empathy needed. In the future, when they come across people with difficulties, perhaps they can reach out to help. The lessons taught today are helping the students realize what life is like for those with physical impairments. Different aged children have different activities to participate in, with the older children learning the difficulties of getting around in a wheelchair or how difficult it is to string beads using borrowed hands. When I visit the old folks home in the East District in the future, I help them now because they all rely on a wheelchair. Now knowing how difficult life can be for those with physical impairments, it is hoped these children have gained empathy while also counting their blessings in life as they help shape the future of society with warmth and acceptance. The Tsiji Chan from Grounds in Shanghai hosted a parent child event with Dai mothers, guiding parents and children to listen to stories and bond with each other. Through picture books and painting sessions, they've instructed children to get to know themselves better. Dai mothers 
historical characters to guide his children to think and to know themselves better. Very few people really look into their heart and ponder who am I or what I should do to live a meaningful life. This topic is too heavy for children, but through picture books, we can guide them to discover themselves and learn to make the best out of their advantage. I feel that children in different ages can all learn through reflection through these stories. Before I know how to tell a story to him at home, I simply just read it. Today I learned that I can interact with him and ask him questions, so he can learn many things from a story. Through this chance, we got these children together to listen to stories and interact with each other, as well as incorporate Siji concepts. It's very beneficial for children's education. On this day, everyone puts the cell phone aside and enjoyed parent-child bonding time. Taiwanese people are filled with kindness and love. Hu Jiarong, a vegetable vendor, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis nine years ago. Feeling life's impermanence, he started to donate vegetables to the Zhonghua office of Taiwan Farm for Children and Families. Also, a 70-year-old grandma rode her scooter with the homemade dried cabbage to donate them on the charity event. Hu Chaolong drives his truck to the office of Taiwan Fund for Children and Families every day and gives them boxes of fresh vegetables. Hu Chaolong is 36 years old and he has been doing good deeds for over 10 years. But nine years ago, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Therefore, he began to donate all the vegetables that are not sold out to the Taiwan Fund office in Zhanghua County. Because I'm ill, I know that it's better to help people. It's better not to be helped. These elderly people are receiving help from the Taiwan Fund. When they see so many donated vegetables, they are very touched. I told my grandsons that you are receiving help now, so after you grow up, you should pay back so there can be warmth in society. Even if the vegetable prices become more expensive, he still donates them to us. These vegetables also allow disabled children of Taiwan Fund to have abundant lunches and desserts. Another kind donor is this 70-year-old Miss Chen, who rides her scooter for 8 kilometers to the Taiwan Fund office. She said that she grew her Chinese cabbages and dried them. She donated them to us for charity sale in a carnival tomorrow. The news about 180 bags of dried Chinese cabbages for charity sale was widespread, and they were sold out very quickly. It is very touching to see love poured in from everywhere to help. Taichung Foreign Jing Siho hosted a tea event to invite the public to enjoy reading Jing's aphorisms. Take a look and see you next time.